Alright fellas, Tim Zhu just faced IBF champion Bakram Mirzaliyev in what was the highest stake fight of his career, and it absolutely didn't go as planned. In a fight which was looked at by many as just a stepping stone for Tim to gain a world title and get back on track, ended up being closer to a nightmare. I don't think this was just a case of a bad performance, and I think there were several factors which played into why we just saw Tim go out there and look like a deer in headlights from the first bell. So stay with me as we talk about the lead up of the fight, the fight itself, and what this means moving forwards for the division. Now let's go back for a second. Coming into this fight, Tim was coming off his first ever career loss against Sebastian in Fandora. Although he lost a split decision, I don't think this truly felt like a loss. You gotta recognize that Tim vs Fandora on three weeks notice, and bravely fought his way through that horrendous cut. The fight was the United States' true first taste of Tim, and the fight wasn't seen as a true career hurting loss by the general public. It didn't really even put him back a step. Yes, he lost his belt, but the fight he showed resulted in him not really losing his position in the division. And we saw that with the Virgil Ortiz fight being made just a few months later. His market value had not dropped at all. Yet because of that cut not healing properly, we saw this fight cancelled. Tim's promoters are pretty smart. They obviously sat around and thought, what's the way we can basically invalidate any criticisms and get Tim back to the exact same position that he would have been if he won against Fundora? So they looked at the division and the only fight they could easily make with a belt involved was Bakram Murzaliev. He holds the IBF belt, and this is a bit of a guess, but in my opinion, I think it would have been easy to make seeing No Limit Promotions good ties with the sanctioning body. This relationship has got their other fighters into similar positions. Such as Sam Goodman being the IBF mandatory for Inaway, and Mikhailovich somehow getting a fight against Janabek when they found a way to make him the IBF middleweight mandatory. Murtazaliev also had no real promotional ties, and having fought on PBC shows prior, this made this the easiest fight to make. And I reckon the zoo camp saw him as a bit of a stepping stone and underestimated the Russian. Murtazaliev was coming off a pretty average performance when he won the belt against Jack Kolke. Yet what should be taken into consideration is that he took this fight during Ramadan. Specifically, the fight came on the 27th day, so he was significantly affected from the fasting, yet he still managed to take home the win. So it looked like the confidence from the Zoo camp came through watching this average performance and seeing him as an opponent that Zoo could just walk through. I think another thing to take into consideration to this build up was just how much Tim's circumstances in life were changing. They truly were just overlooking this fight. He had sold up in Australia and was planning to move to the US in January where he would base himself of course for the bigger fights to come after this one. He was property shopping in Vegas with his fiancée, and of course marriage and kids were probably not far off his horizon. His life was changing dramatically, and the question is, was the drive to be the best which was once there, now gone? You contrast that to Bakram who is basically fighting to feed his family, and you see quite the contrast in motivation. Leading into the fight, you also had the introduction of Costa Zhu, into a corner which hadn't seen him in since Tim's first fight. And of course, with Costa in the corner for the first time in such a big fight, it brings even more pressure. Truly coming to this fight, although the media was peddling this narrative that Tim was this ultra confident fighter who was just going to blaze through his opponent, there was truly a lot of pressure on his shoulders. You saw the focus being on what What's next for Tim, with Thurman rearing his head in the press conference and the Canelo name even being thrown about, rather than focusing on the challenge in front of him. And I think we saw how this pressure affected Zhu from the first spell of the fight. He came out truly looking like a deer in headlights. In the fight, what was the first sign of worrying things to come was the second he took a hit to the forehead, Tim immediately touched the top of his head and then checked his glove to see if he was bleeding. That's a pretty horrific sign from the first punch. It either means the scar isn't truly healed and he's expecting it to bleed, or it's almost like a panicked trauma based reaction. What he went through in the last fight would have been pretty traumatic, and the thing is, had he got over that last performance. This immediately showed to me a lack of confidence. He seemed to be standing upright, trying to put the pressure on, yet seemed to have that lack of confidence within his own shots. His head wasn't moving off the line, and he was there to be hit. The second round, we saw exactly that. He was knocked down a total of three times in this round, with him lucky to see out the end of the round being saved by the bell, yet he makes it out of his corner and takes on the third round. Tim obviously was panicking, he didn't make any angles, his head was on the line, and he was super stiff. And Bakram didn't back down. A left hook rocked Tim's chin again, he gets back up, and by this point the towel should have been thrown in. 
Yet one more barrage from the Russian made Tim's corner finally throw in the towel and the fight was over. Tim's worst case scenario came true. But all the praise really needs to be on Murtazaliev. In a fight where most people wrote him off, he came and showed the world why he's truly the world champ. He showed that he wasn't just a stepping stone and has now solidified himself on the world stage. The question of course after this fight comes with what's next for both. Now I'll start with Murtazaliev. The world is now his oyster. He's announced himself properly on the world stage. I don't know what sort of deal he has with PBC or if he even has one, yet on PBC currently they both have Sebastian Fundora and Errol Spence. Both massive fights which could both be likely a next step. And furthermore, I wouldn't be surprised if he isn't promotionally contracted to PBC to see the Saudis step in and bring him to Riyadh season and see him match up against the likes of Crawford or Ortiz. Really any of the players at the top of the division could all be a possibility for him. His future is bright and I'll be looking forward in watching whatever comes next for him. Now, What's next for Zoo? This one's a bit harder. I do really feel for Tim. He's honestly a good bloke, but a victim I think of too much pressure. I don't think the focus was 100% on boxing. His life was changing rapidly at the wrong time, and his team was looking beyond the challenge in front of him. So heading into the ring, although he may have been physically fit, I question if everything going on around him took a significant personal toll on him. It's now a very long road back. Tim is only 29, so there is time for him to regain his position through winning his next few fights. This is of course dependent on how he prepares for his next few fights, will he regain his confidence, and is his punch resistance still there? The potential he previously had is now long gone, yet he still has the opportunity to come back and become a multiple time world champion. And I think it should be applauded he has been fighting the best fight available for him, that a lot of fighters just simply don't do. In terms of any future opponents, if you know anything about Australian boxing, I'm sure you'd recognise probably about now Michael Zarafa would have a massive smile on his face. One of the biggest beefs in Aussie boxing which never saw the ring because of Zarafa pulling out now has the potential to happen. A comeback stadium fight against Zarafa in Australia could be exactly what Zoo needs to regain his confidence. Although whatever comes next I reckon will truly be just a cherry pick in order to regain his confidence before going in for a bigger matchup in the future. I hope to see him take some time off and truly reevaluate his situation properly before returning to the ring. I'm sure whatever comes next for both fighters will certainly entertain with the super welterweight division quickly becoming one of the most exciting divisions in boxing. Now, I want to hear your thoughts about the match, your thoughts on their performance, and what you see in the future for the both of them. If you did enjoy, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll always try my best to help keep you guys informed. But thanks for watching fellas, and I'll catch you in the next one.